Nintendo sure has done some weird-ass things with Wario. Like, you remember Super Mario Land, right? Well, I guess after a whole two entries, they were done with that and decided to have Wario as the protagonist for the third one. And thus came an influx of the Wario Lands. I mean, it's just the idea of him taking over an entire series that really fits his goofy character, you know? Him being this crazy, creepy, greedy, gross, fart ass, always picking his nose like a weirdo? You. But, okay, what about WarioWare? He's got this cool jean jacket with these... strange pink pants and... goggles? I gotta be honest, I was never a fan of his outfit in these games, especially when they brought him over to Brawl and used his WarioWare look as the default design. No! But I do love the games themselves. I mean, I've only played smooth moves, but man, everything about it was just so charming and weird in terms of its characters, sound design, and different art styles for all the micro games. I mean, between this, this, and all of that, Nintendo's clearly gone down some interesting routes with this guy. I've always felt like it's been an outlet for them to be truly experimental with their games. But then, there's Wario World. Yeah, a game I barely see anyone talk about nowadays. It's like this weird spin-off 3D platform released for the GameCube in 2003. I actually made a video about it quite a while ago. In fact, it was my first main video ever, or at least one that was on a video game. Looking back on it, I remember actually being really scared to publicize it for some odd reason. Like, I was scared people would think it wasn't good, despite the fact I was fairly proud of it at the time. Might have had to do something with how much utter garbage I uploaded before that. Like, no joke, this is what my channel looked like at the time. It'd take me a while to explain it all, trust me. As for the game itself, man, this shit is honestly insane. Wario World possibly has some of the weirdest enemy designs I've ever seen in anything. The bosses too. Man, it is hard for me to wrap my head around these things. This game can get genuinely, uncomfortably creepy sometimes, to the point where I seriously don't think Nintendo would even approve of all this if it were made today. Which is also a testament to how generally weird games could be in this generation. Couple that with the absolutely unhinged voice clips from Charles Martinet's portrayal of Wario. Yeah, I still love this game. I guess it does get repetitive sometimes with the combat, but even gameplay-wise, I still love it. I just love how out of control and strangely slippery Wario feels and moves around in this game. With all his wacky animations, it really does complement how much Treasure was trying to push the crazier side out of him. Even if that led to some questionable design decisions. Anyways, all this Wario talk has gotta mean something, right? Well, that brings me to Wario Land Shake It, or the Shake Dimension. Seriously, why do PAL releases always change subtitles for no reason? I feel like this game drew me in mainly for its distinct art style, but also for the fact that this is the last platformer-based Wario game Nintendo ever released, 15 years ago back in 2008. That reminds me though, one of the marketing campaigns for this game was actually really cool. It involved an interactive YouTube video, possibly the first of its kind, in which it just started out as normal, amazing footage of the game until parts of the website UI would crumble and fall down as Wario pounded and punched walls and bricks and stuff. For 2008, this is seriously cool. As for Shake It itself, well, it was developed by Goodfeel, who would go on to develop some Kirby and Yoshi games, so it's fair to say they probably have had a good relationship with Nintendo. So yeah, long introduction finally over, I want to play this game and just see what it is, and see why no one really talks about it too. This video is actually being uploaded as sort of a 3 year anniversary of that Wario World video I made a long time ago too, as well as celebrating WarioWare Move It releasing the same month, so uh, good timing? But I think it'll be a breath of fresh air, just a simpler game. Nothing too obscure, and nothing too complex. Fuck. Okay, well it is gonna be complex as fuck, I mean you see the video length! Yeah, let's go! We open up with an... anime cutscene. This is pretty cool. 
apparently the animation here was done by Production IG, which you may know for all of these. Anyways, a pirate named Captain Syrup breaks into a museum to observe the ancient globe of an entirely different dimension, the Shake Dimension. In this world, something bad has happened. The Shake King has kidnapped and imprisoned Queen Merelda and all these guys, which are her subjects, called Murfles, and finally the bottomless coin sack, which does exactly what you think it does. Surely there's some kind of brave hero that can save the day. Enter Wario's world. You see him just kind of snoozing in his car, the absolute life. But now he's got a giant special new gift from Captain Serp's thievery from earlier, containing that same ancient globe. After hitting him with a hammer, a magical telescope appears, and Wario meets a green Murfle from the other dimension. He goes on and on and on about this sob story about the princess and the horrors of the shaking. Oh, treasure? Well then, Wario immediately agrees to help him after hearing about the bottomless coin sack, with his only intent of going on an adventure being to only obtain said coin sack. So yeah, who gives a shit about all this? It's a simple yet funny premise. Fits the whole Wario nature, you know? I like it. Yeah! I don't know. What else do I say? Well, I guess now that we're plopped yeah. into the tutorial Next stage, call. we should talk about Wario's moveset. I imagine most of it is brought over from the previous Wario Land games. Most definitely the dash, which you can use to break stone blocks and defeat enemies. The dash is pretty damn helpful. I use it like almost 100% of the time for just getting around faster. In fact, that's one thing I'll praise, the general movement. This game feels really good to control, it's very snappy and tight. That probably stems from the fact that there aren't really any physics part to the movement. Meaning you can like, change direction while midair. Which I think is totally fine. I actually imagine this game is very fun to speedrun just because of how precise you can be and how easy it is to just hop back and forth between platforms. It feels pretty good, especially with that sideways Wii Remote. Speaking of which... Aside from bashing, pounding, and spinning his way into victory, Wario can also shake things like a madman, hence the title Shake It. You see a money bag? Shake it to get a bunch of coins. You want to move an object? To shake and pound the ground. Even enemies too, just keep shaking to get a garlic. I feel like a lot of people like to complain about this, and yes, it is a total gimmick. Yes, it could have easily been mapped to a trigger or button, and yes, it does get a bit tiring after a while. There was sort of a stage where I got numb to it near the end. It really seems like such an easy target for game reviews to obliterate into the ground for all these reasons. Reminds me of those old AVGN knockoffs that would be on 2009 YouTube with that horrendous compression. Look at me, I'm Wario! It doesn't even make any sense. Like, I don't know, I really don't see this as a major issue that brings down the entire game. You just have to shake the Wii Remote every now and then. Or every now and then meaning pretty often, but still, it's not that bad. And I at least get what they were going for, a gimmick that fits Wario's craziness while also being kind of interesting mechanically. Let's talk about the structure. Since it is a fairly simple 2D platformer, it's pretty basic. There are five areas in this game, four levels each, and a boss at the end. Although there is something interesting here. If you want to unlock a new area, you have to purchase the map for it from Captain Surf's shop. However, since every single one is available from the get-go, you can actually buy maps out of order and complete an area before another, if you have the coins. I found this really cool actually, it's something I don't see many 2D platformers do. Anyways, as for level design, I thought it was pretty decent, pretty good actually. I mean, I can't really pick out many standout levels that wowed me with the gimmicks, but more so I remember all of these for the art direction and theme, which I'll definitely get to later. Don't expect like Mario Galaxy levels of creativity with all the new things it introduces, but do expect a decent well-designed side-scroller. Except, well, save for a few levels which I found to be probably the lowest points of the game, yeah, it's the underwater stages. 
You have to control your sub warring. Pretty good pun there, I'll admit. But my main problem here are the controls. I don't know how they did it, but they managed to put tank controls in a 2D side scroller, of all things. Like, to go forward and backward, you have to hold right and left, respectively. But to change direction, you have to tilt the Wii remote? And I guess it works, but it's really clunky and unnecessary in my opinion. Whatever, it could have been way worse though. And there's only three of these stages at all, so not a big issue in my opinion. They have other stuff like this too, where you have to control some kind of vehicle temporarily. Take the Rocket Buckets and Uni Buckets for example, that's their official yeah. names by the way. You got tilt controls for these ones, and it feels as good as you think it would. Pretty slippery overall. It's kind of like those water surfing races in Mario Galaxy 1. I think you do get used to it after a while. I will say though, as I continued playing, I started to notice one particular thing. That being the fact that all these levels feel like a Mario Maker level. Like you could tell they were all created with some level editor. And okay, I know that's probably how every 2D platform is made, yes, but it's when this game starts wanting to do things like use an enemy to activate a switch by throwing it at it, Yoshi's Island style, which causes some blocks to turn off or something, maybe change the direction of a treadmill, usually for some kind of collectible. Yeah, all of these switch-based puzzles actually remind me of a Mario Maker level I would have wanted to design back in like 2016 or something. That may sound bad, but am I saying that's a bad thing? Absolutely not. My old levels are dated for sure, but I always thought that just the idea of having these kinds of puzzles in a 2D platformer was a little neat. Even if in Shake It, it may not be super fleshed out, it's still nice to see. And it also becomes less of a concern when taking into account those tight controls it has to offer too. Though, this is especially apparent with what happens at the end of every stage. For every level in the game, except for the underwater ones, you have to rescue the Murphle in prison in the cage by shaking it... <laughs> which will sound the alarm for the shaking. And now, it's an escape mission. You have to frantically speed your way through old territory and get back to the start as fast as you can. You even have a time limit. I love this actually, this is something totally unique to just this series, and just that alone I find really cool. Because you start to realize, the developers didn't just design these levels for Wario to go through them normally, but also backwards. Lee. They even force you down new paths seamlessly by triggering these red blocks to turn off the moment you start the speedrun sequence. It's literally just the on and off switch from Mario Maker 2. See, that's why I drew the comparison earlier. Even if these sections are pretty fun to memorize and get good at, like sometimes it'll be total trial and error to just figure out the optimal path, you will never run out of time. Heck, I don't even think I ran out of time on any of these sequences. In fact, I've always wondered what would happen if I did. So, let's see here. Oh, okay. And, oh, that is pretty cool actually. I was just expecting the standard black screen with the retry option and that'd be it. But that's kind of a neat detail, I won't lie. Why did I exit a Wii menu? Well, while we're getting back on track, let's talk about... Difficulty. Come to think of it, Wario Land Shake It is not that difficult in general, at least if you're playing casually. It's very lenient I notice, like there aren't any bottomless pits, some things just won't instantly kill you like they do in other games, simply touching an enemy doesn't do anything, you don't instantly die when you touch lava. Getting crushed doesn't have any consequences, instead you just get this hilarious animation of Wario being comically smushed. I actually really like that though. I honestly hate how every new soup just instantly kills you when you get crushed in those games. I'm not saying New Super Mario Bros is hard just because of that, I've just started to realize it's a little annoying. Actually, you know what, scratch that. These games are hard as SHIT! Okay, fuck! Fuck!
However, in Shake It, you can even buy heart potions from Captain Syrup, which will instantly revive you if you ever die. You can carry up to two at a time even, so if you have the money to spare, you should have the opposite of a problem when playing this game. But okay, what about those collectibles? <sighs> okay, you gotta change the music, dude. But okay, what about those collectibles? Every platformer is gonna have one of these. Yeah, so in every level you have three treasures, which are usually like the most random ass things ever, accompanied with a funny little description in the treasure list. You also have these things called missions. They're kind of like... No, they're actually exactly like Mario Maker 2's clear conditions. That's our third comparison today, Jesus. Two of these missions will always involve collecting a certain number of coins and completing the escape missions within a certain time frame with the other ones being something completely random and sometimes dependent on the stage itself. Most of the time, it could be not taking any damage, which is pretty straightforward, but tough, depending on how hard the level itself is. But then there's other things, like bounce on these enemies a certain number of times, blow up a specific amount of bombs simultaneously, complete the stage as mini Wario. So this is where the game ramps up in difficulty in my opinion. First off, those treasures may be really well hidden, and may take some work getting to in the first place. And then there's these two missions right here. First off, the speedrun mission. I mean, it could take a while for you to get it down, having to memorize the exact path you have to take with these speed boosters, and if you have poor reaction time, it may not be super fun, and dare I say, it may take trial and error. It may even pose borderline puzzles for you to figure out how to get through without bumping into a wall and losing all your speed. Collecting a certain amount of coins on the other hand is a completely different story. This basically means going for... every coin? Yeah, every coin. Which means going through these stages with a fine tooth comb. You really have to scour and search for everything, and make sure you don't miss a single diamond or big money bag since they're worth quite... a lot. Oh my god! But hey, this is all for 100%, right? I am in no way complaining about optional rewards in a video game, because I would even say these are super fun to go for too. Collecting all the coins is a lot of work, but it's fun to discover new parts of the stage you've never seen before. 100% of these levels basically means mastering it. You know the level layout, room by room, tile by tile even. Okay, maybe not that far. But you know pretty much everything there is to know about a single Wario Land Shake It level. And that's pretty cool to me. Cause let's just say, you are definitely not gonna complete all the missions in one go. You're gonna have to play through them over and over and over again learning new things about it, trying not to screw up at any time, and I swear I've gotten this retry button shit down to perfection. Like look, check this out. Actually frame perfect menu optimization, god. Because of all this, I'd actually even say Shake It is best played when you're going for all of these treasures and optional achievements. It's just a lot more fun that way, simple as that. But if you're not, is this game still fun? Absolutely. I think you'll still definitely enjoy it, not only for the gameplay and level design, but also for all the individual level theming and the art style. Yeah, so we gotta talk about this. This is most definitely Wario Land Shake It's best selling point, its claim to fame. Simply put, I love how this game looks artistically. Every single level is breathing with these lush, beautiful color palettes, stunning detail and brushwork. At some point, you really do have to just stop and admire all the work they put into these backgrounds especially. They're all just so good looking. I especially love how it all has this old-timey, sort of ancient painter-like treasure mappy vibe. You know what I mean. It definitely fits the premise of the game, though. And every level has a different look and theme, too. Different music, even. This is truly commendable. 
Look, I might get some slack for this, and I know it's cliche, but compare this to the freaking new Super Mario Brothers. Constantly reusing songs, the same world themes for every single game, same graphics. Yeah, you get it. Shake It just has way more personality and creativity than New Soup ever could. The different aesthetics makes every level stand out in some way. You are definitely going to remember this game's areas better than any generic 2D Mario can ever dream of. A standout favorite of mine is Airy Tail Castle. First of all, the backdrop and art direction here, very pleasant on the eyes. But second of all, like the rest of the game, you'd expect this level to have some catchy song or whatever, like usual. But instead, it's just this serene ambient track playing in the distant background. It makes this area feel isolated in a way, yet very, very relaxing and calm. And I can't really explain why the developers included it here at such a random point in the game, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> what I adore as well is how everything is animated too. Gorgeous ass animation for the enemies, bosses, and especially for Wario. Okay, well, first of all, his design here, actually legendary. It's not just a regular ass, round ass render Wario. No, this Wario's got some flair and sharpness in the line work, and I like that. Back to animations. I really got a kick out of all his weird gestures. I love how he struggles every time he goes into a pipe, and also whatever this is. Whether he was engulfed in flames, rolled up in a snowball, or just spinning into a new world, Goodfield really did a great job with conveying his peculiar greedy side in this game. I'd say it's maybe not as insane as Warrior World, but yeah, who cares, just fucking BLAST out of your ass! But of course, like any other YouTuber, I just have to mention the main menu. You got Wario shaking his booty to that groovy song in the background. Like, I don't think any other Nintendo game could ever come close to having this much Wario ass action in one scene alone. He's literally shaking it. Oh, 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 you sneaky little rascals. Good one. Jokes aside, I do have to say, you really don't see a lot of games like this. At least in the 2D side-scrolling platformer genre. Games that have completely hand-drawn aesthetics and characters. I mean, we have had ones like that, like Rayman Legends and Origins, but even with those, they have motion tweens for the animations themselves, which is not bad. Those games are still unbelievably beautiful as hell. But for Wario Land Shake It, every character is animated frame by frame with this crystal clear representation of what action they're performing. And I guess for a while, I had a hard time differentiating what's so special about this when compared to the more popular pixel art. But the thing is, this kind of game has to render all of its backgrounds and characters at such a higher fidelity. You can't just mask any details in creative ways you'd usually see on a small screen with pixel art. Because every detail here has to be precise and understandable at that crisp 480p resolution too. The development process for nailing this art style was also unsurprisingly really challenging. I mean, there were more than 2,000 full drawings. Drawings? Drawings? What? I mean, there were more than 2,000 full drawings made for all of Wario's actions, and around 6,000 for all the enemy patterns by itself. That's an enormous amount of work. Seriously, if this game's development history doesn't make you appreciate 2D animators, I don't know what will. The thing is, Goodfeel easily could have made all the characters 3D models, which would have been way less work, you'd just have to rig everything out and call it a day. But they went with the hand-drawn look and I think it definitely paid off. Seriously, this game is genuinely beautiful and unique, and I would not have it any other way. When it comes to the world the developers created with this game, I think it's all really charming. Down to the character and enemy designs being not only appealing, but also fitting into a Wario-like universe. It's also really lovable in my opinion, and Damn, it's definitely way better than Wario World's more... unique character designs, let's just say that. 
You see, those were weird and strange, but also disturbing. And they didn't even fit in with Wario, I feel like. But maybe they did, you can argue all day about this one. The bottom line is, Shake It is just more appealing with its designs. But, uh, yeah, the reason I bring all this up is because if Wario World didn't do it right, then Wario Land Shake It definitely did. The bosses. They sure look better than anything from that game. Okay, dunking on Wario World aside, these bosses are pretty good, in my opinion. They're definitely the hardest parts of the game for a casual playthrough, but I think they're perfectly fair in difficulty. They're all about forcing you to survive through an entire cycle and onslaught of attacks until your chance to damage the opponent finally arrives. They get real creative with it too. For example, one of them has you riding your own Wario vehicle on one wheel. And you even got a special boxing glove for punching back oncoming tires and plowing down the enemy. This one is genuinely tough though. Meet Large Fry. This guy actually gave me a bit of trouble. He's able to spawn so many enemies at once that the arena could straight up become a battlefield, and in order to hurt him, you have to throw two enemies into his mouth so he drops a bomb. The thing is, he is constantly moving, attacking, and doing all sorts of shit. So between having to manage the ground floor, you also have to focus up here. It's a good game of multitasking, and I do quite like it for that. So yeah, if the bosses are pretty good, what else is good? Hmm, let's see here. Oh yeah, the music. Let's just say there are some really catchy songs in here, but I especially love how diverse the soundtrack is. For example, one of the levels may have this underground, ruined piano vibe. While the other may have a song straight out of Klonoa's Endgame. Okay, maybe it doesn't have that dreamlike sound, but yeah, I love all the use of these saw waves. So good. My favorite song in the entire game, though, is probably Stone Carving City. Like, holy shit, this right here might literally be the Wario theme. I thought Greenhorn Forest was good, but I don't know, there's a good chance I like this even better. Fun fact, if we're gonna talk about Wario World songs, they actually also brought back Greenhorn Ruins track for Glitter Town, which I find cool. It fits right in with the casino level too. Also have to give a huge shout out to Foul Water Falls, such a groovy ass song like MAN! And of course some of the songs that play through the escape sequences. Almost every song in Shake It I loved. You know, music adds so much to a game's experience for me. It's why I talk about the soundtracks of a game in like, every video. And in Shake It, every track perfectly captures the atmosphere of its associated level while also being extremely catchy. Well, okay, I think I'm finally done with all that general Wario Land Shake It talk, because now I'm gonna talk about the final boss ending, you know, like I usually do. I don't think any of you really care about being spoiled, I mean it's WARIO for Christ's sake. But just in case, you can skip to the next chapter if you want to, or if that doesn't work, just use this timestamp. I don't care. You fuck God, what a bitch, Wario. So, you unlock the final area by doing the, the, the game, and now here you are, the final boss versus the Shake King. This is a good final boss, at least for a 2D platformer, in my eyes. The first phase may be a little tough at first, but it can become an absolute breeze if you play long enough. The Shake King has all these attacks, earthquakes, shockwaves, lots of deadly stuff. Fun fact, when he's dizzy, you can actually run up and shake him violently to get a HUGE amount of coins! It serves absolutely no purpose for the fight itself, it's just a fun little easter egg of course. But be careful, he can also do the same thing to you. After doing all of that, you move on to the second and final phase. The atmosphere is pretty cool. You got these beautifully drawn purple clouds in the background. And there's no music. 
It's just a simple, tense ambient track, all to make this boss feel more like a finale. And the Shake King does not mess around here, throwing around these plasma energy orbs around, lightning strikes, fire, all of the sort. This fight took me a few tries, but still, like all the rest of the bosses, I felt everything was completely fair and satisfying to get good at. But once you do finally defeat him, it instantly cuts to an anime cutscene. The Shake Dimension is finally free of the Heartless, and Wario has thankfully saved Queen Merelda. She sincerely thanks him, and. Hmm. Now, who fucking cares about that shit? Wario's finally gone to the bottomless coin sack! And back at home, he shakes all the coins he has ever wanted. Now, this is the life. Full euphoria! And credits. That was very abrupt. It really cut to the chase there. Well, I actually kind of love that. I just love how Wario's greedy, selfish ass just wastes no time at all to get his money. The fast pacing here definitely fits the charm of his... stupid personality... bitch. Oh. Though it is not over, in a post credit scene, with Wario still in a state of joy, Captain Serp is there, taking all the coins from him, including the bottomless coin sack. So yeah, it turns out she had some ulterior motives this entire time, despite the fact that she seemed pretty into Wario. In fact, upon starting this game, I didn't even know she was a reoccurring villain in the previous Wario Lands. Should have seen that one coming, I guess. Oh well, it's all pretty lighthearted. Now, we're not done yet, because for all the completionists out there, if you wanted more Wario goodness in your life, well, you're in luck. After finishing the game, you unlock bonus levels and boss missions. Okay, you technically don't unlock bonus levels. Now, instead of a Merfle telling you how hard a stage is, it'll now also tell you if there's a secret map inside, which will unlock a corresponding bonus level. To find the secret maps, you gotta pound the ground where it sparkles. Fun fact, I actually did find one of the secret maps through total accident on a playthrough I did before, where my Wii U was set to widescreen mode. I just so happened to find the secret map at such an arbitrary location. Pretty lucky, I gotta say. Speaking of widescreen, by the way, man, I completely forgot to mention this, but Wario Land Shake It was obviously designed for 4x3 displays. For some reason. Like, isn't that weird? Even weirder when you realize the only other Wario game on the Wii is also in 4x3. What's going on here? The thing is, is that in Shake It, if you have 16x9 enabled for your console, it will render in widescreen, but it will just have these semi-distracting borders in-game. And you could definitely tell all of these UI elements were designed for a smaller aspect ratio. Also, let me show you something. Did this just, like, not get past playtesting? And the home menu doesn't fill the screen in widescreen either. Maybe it has to do something with overscan. I don't know. Alright, I got really off track there. But yeah, bonus levels. They're definitely the most difficult in the game. But they're not like hard while you'll be dying a lot. Just relatively hard. I do have to praise this, however. Every bonus level has a completely different aesthetic from the standard stages. Like, yeah, it does use the same music and is loosely based on pre-existing levels, but even still, this is kind of neat how much work they still put into just these optional post-game areas. Some of the bonus levels even have unique enemies, seen nowhere else in the game. Now, something as small as that I find really cool, especially with these fake treasure chests too. I also love this particular level here that is pretty much only an escape mission, but not just any, a long escape mission. It's the whole level, and it's pretty tough, but very rewarding to complete. Same with this one where you gotta control the rocket bucket with tilt controls for the entire stage. Really takes a lot of patience, but it pays off when you're finally done. But man, if you want 100% these stages, you're gonna have to work for it. 
seriously, some of these took me over an hour to 100% complete one level alone. They have tons of missions too, my god. And then there's the new boss missions. These are tough, let's just say that. Not taking any damage, beating it within a time limit. Yeah, it sounds easier than it actually is, but trust me, you quickly realize these attack cycles are sometimes unpredictable as hell. Especially with this dumbass clown. I really don't like how creepy it is. And of course, that large fry boss. Good luck not taking damage there. But again, I'm not complaining about 100% in a video game for Christ's sake because even if these levels and missions took a BUNCH of trial and error for me, it was still fun. But in all honesty, nearing the end of the game, I was starting to get really tired of playing. I just wanted to be done already. It was just one of those Wario-themed all-nighters, you know. In fact, if I were to add up the times of all these recording sessions, you'd see that the post-game alone took me nearly 16 hours to finish. That's quite a lot for a game that's not a visual novel or RPG, especially when you consider 100% of the game before the final boss took me another 16 hours. Yeah. Promise I did all the math right. But hey, let's say you were to play this game. I'd actually recommend trying to go for some of the collectibles in the normal campaign, since it's really fun to do so. Then, after defeating the final boss, I'd also recommend playing some of these bonus levels, which are pretty fun too. Maybe don't do the boss missions, seriously those are just a total pain in the asshole. Besides, what do you even unlock for 100%ing this game? Well, if you get all the treasures, you get a fancy schmancy looking main menu way better than the old dusty garage. That's kind of neat, but it is just an aesthetic reward. What about doing all the missions? Well, you get all the songs in the media room, because like, if you do all the missions for a stage, you get that level song. I can listen to the soundtrack on YouTube, damn it! Oh, but for 100%ing all the missions, you do get a secret song, which is just the song that plays at the ending. Okay, for fuck's sake, dude. I literally worked my ass off to get all these achievements, treasures, bonus levels, for the sole purpose of making this video and being as thorough as possible, and this is all I get? For God's sake, I was expecting something batshit insane here. I was genuinely hoping to like, I don't know, meet up with Shigeru Miyamoto or some shit, get to see Wario's ass completely nude, a dream vacation at the very least. But no, you don't get anything really. Yeah, maybe not worth it. But I guess that's what they always say. It's the journey that matters, not the end goal. I got to play more of Wario Land Shake It, and I suppose I'm fine with that. That's pretty much it, that's the game for you. Wario Land Shake It is not like a mind-blowingly great 2D platformer, but dare I say, it's still pretty damn good. I had a lot of fun with it, it was fun to go through this even if near the end I was getting a bit exhausted, but truly it was the art style that carried it for me. I loved this game just for all that Wario charm and character, you know? In fact, I would like to say something. Nintendo should absolutely bring this series back. It's honestly extremely confusing that they haven't done so sooner. Maybe it has to do with sales? I don't know. I imagine every other entry is equally underrated and very personality driven. Regardless, I think Nintendo could really benefit from some unique ass 2D platformers in their life. Yeah, I'm all about that upcoming Super Mario Wonder. In fact, I think that game looks pretty spectacular. But come on, what about my man Wario over here? He hasn't had the time to shine in those traditional purple overalls. He's just been donning this weird ass jean jacket and pink pants combo to play some micro games, which is fine, but it's obvious Nintendo's been prioritizing other characters in the franchise too. I mean, look how much longer it takes us like Wario. And man, at this point, I'll take anything I can get. Like, I'll take Wario farts to death at this point. At 
the time of me writing this video, it is late August turning to September, but by the time this video will be out, Super Mario Bros. Wonder will also be out. Yeah, it begs the question though, why am I making this so ahead of time? I don't know, I'm probably worried I'll spend another 55 months editing it. Next video I'm gonna make after this will be about Tomato Adventure, but that video might also already be out, so by the time that this Shake It video releases, who knows what will be my next endeavor. Anyways, just thank you for watching, I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you sometime soon. Bye. Fuck.